what is going on everybody welcome back into barley studios for another awesome video now in this video we're going to be continuing the pokemon diglett diorama series or playlist whatever you want to call it this is another video in that playlist and i'm excited to be able to pull out the airbrush uh some acrylics and a little bit of dirt and we're going to go ahead and detail this uh more so mole variant of diglett uh, as you've seen in the previous videos we've already created him in a cartoon version a realistic worm version as well as this mole version so we're kind of just cascading into all sorts of different little variants of diglet and i'm super excited to be able to produce this one now as you can see here we got this completely sculpted out here it is fully baked with sculpey original clay over a a, um, a 20 ounce uh, modern curved tumbler I also have magnets attached to the lid. Now this is more so of a trophy as you can see, but it's still very fun to kind of create it so that you can actually drink out of it if you chose to. Uh, mostly this is going to be a trophy that kind of sits on my shelf and then maybe one day I'll either sell it or give it away as kind of a giveaway on my YouTube or TikTok channels. Uh, so that may come along uh, down the road, maybe if I'm trying to clear up some uh, shelf space or, and make room for other projects. Uh, so stay tuned for that maybe. As you can see here, we're going to run into the airbrushing of this awesome little Diglett mole version here. We're just going to call him the mole. How about that? Uh, not Diglett Dig. It's going to be Moly Mole. Moly Mole. Holy Moly. Moly. Guacamole. And what we'll do is here, we're going to just go ahead and use an airbrush here very generally. And then we're going to spray this in a very wet fashion to get just an overall kind of yellow ochre to a uh, burnt sienna type of look. I'll also begin to apply that uh, via a filbert brush here. It's a medium sized filbert uh, into the nooks and crannies. And I'm really wanting to cake that into the, the ripples and the kind of like the naked mole rat skin that is on the exterior of his body. Now, I know he looks a little bit unorthodox without his little hands there, but we will add those here shortly. Now, a lot of the uh, depictions of Diglett, when you see him below the dirt uh, of the cartoon version or uh, fan made, you do see his little mole hands kind of sticking out. And that's going to kind of be the goal of this portion of the, the, of the series here. I want to make sure those little hands and claws are kind of poking up out of the dirt base when we do sculpt and create that. So that is the goal with this one. We're going to create him just in a nice general kind of pale out uh, uh, version of skin. And we're going to kind of make him to where he has little claws, little cute little claws that pop out of the dirt. We're going to start off, as you can see here, by painting the entire thing, the overall same shade. Before we kind of bring in any other colors, we're going to hit that with a heat gun just so we can uh, kind of evaporate some of that uh, excess water. And then we'll continue relaying this in. Now I'm going to begin to introduce more of a kind of a raw uh, umber and a, uh, a burnt umber into the corners uh, in the, the kind of the folds of the skin where there would be more so shadow. Uh, than the rest of the exterior of the skin there and then what we'll do, we'll do is as we come in with a uh, kind of like a, a uh, titanium white and a little bit of raw sienna dry brushing we're able to kind of bring up the the skin tone quite a bit and we're able to make it look like more of a naked mole rat now as you can see there i am pulling out a little bit of bronze yes this is a folk art metallic bronze and we're going to go ahead and kind of add a little bit of metallic uh, texture to his body we've added around the kind of platelets around his, his belly there around his eye sockets and around the kind of ear holes not ear lobes but ear holes uh, and then we're also going to kind of do a little bit of a light brushing of that over the nose but that kind of gets dissipated as i add more layers later on in the process I went ahead and also gave the pupils of the eyes a um, kind of like a gunmetal gray. Uh, I do come back with a little bit of a Mars black wash later and I kind of uh, dinged those out to a darker tone later on in the process. We went ahead and also applied some dark uh, Mars black and some, um, some burnt umber into the cavities of the nose, the nostrils, as well as the ears. Now we're going to begin the process of dry brushing. Now this is quite a bit of work and I do do this in a quite a few different sessions here. I want to make sure that I'm able to kind of build up the overall kind of uh, what you expect a naked mole rat to look like. Uh, whether you look up some reference photos on YouTube or some uh, on Google images, I want to make sure that I'm able to, uh, people are able to say, hey look, that's a naked mole rat in a way. But as you can see, we kind of move around the tumbler there and we let particular areas dry. And if I feel like it needs a little bit more brown or a little bit more uh, more titanium white, 
uh, just to bring up how white it is in the flesh tone then I will continue adding that in until I'm really happy with how it looks but don't worry I, even if it does come out a little wider than I expect it to be I can always kind of uh, do a wash over that and we'll bring in some more of the natural water browns uh, over those colors and it just accents them even more it just really uh, brings a lot of earthiness to them it kind of uh, it just brings the level of detail so if you get up close to it you really see all of those layers built up over and over uh, to give it the perfect amount of detail i am going to try to apply a little bit more highlight towards the top uh, maybe forehead area uh, and then that will cascade down into the base that is why i usually kind of paint the base of the tumbler and the topper at the same time so you can kind of blend them in so they really look like they go well together again this is mainly a trophy but it's still kind of fun to have like a drinking hole at the very top so that if you wanted to drink from it you could but that's really not how i'm gonna design these i'm really designing them as a, just having a tumbler base so that it just has a hollow center and that's just kind of what i want to build my clay up on top of i could of course use anything that i wanted to if i wanted to build this in a truly like a, a diglet shape or anything then i can definitely use a different base of aluminum foil or maybe like a, a, a piece of um, a wood armature or something like that so that's always an option as well as you can see there in the previous uh, clip there we did spray that with a dirty wash uh, it's kind of hard to see that but it does kind of sink into the recesses here and there and it kind of blends it in quite well now we're going to begin the process of applying some color to his little his little mittens or his little claws here we're going to start off by working on the paws themselves and as you can see there we did sculpt a kind of like platelet texture on the back of those paws i just figured that uh, a lot of uh, mole rat pictures have like little platelets on the back of the hands maybe that's to keep the the hands from deteriorating or wearing down as they claw their way through the earth and material and maybe to reduce the overall abrasiveness of the dirt on the hands um, even if that's not really the case i'm not really an expert on moles <laughs> but uh, it's really kind of fun to be able to incorporate some of that armor texture into the hands uh, and, and it's just really nice to see that come through we will go ahead and uh, apply some metal metallic texture to those as well uh, to give a simulation of, of armor and that's what, you know my version of this is, is how i want to paint it but you could do this however you wanted to i think it turns out quite well we're giving it a nice general uh, wash here i'm using a little bit of roundy and Do dollar inks here this is a sepia and a little bit of burnt umber and then also i'm introducing some water with that and we're just going to kind of let that sink into all the recesses and any kind of sculpting or anything i left in the clay will kind of peek through there And I'll continue building up that between the uh, the fingers there. Uh, that way, when I do get the claws put in, they just really have a nice defined shadow there. I'm going to apply a little bit of dry brushing, same as the skin, onto the edges of the paws there. Just so that it kind of blends well with the existing skin tone that it already has in it. And it doesn't set... So as we continue to build up that dry brushing there, I really do think it brings a lot of life to it. And I think that if you can kind of blend the, the, the perfect amount of wash as well as dry brushing, it really does uh, bring a level of complexity and, and life to the projects that you make. Uh, if anything you take from my channel uh, here on YouTube or if you're watching a highlight clip on uh, TikTok, make sure you, you understand that, that if you understand the washes and the dry brushing on detail work like this, it really does um, increase the overall quality of your work, but also it makes life a lot easier as far as bringing out details. You don't have to work as hard to make things look good. We're bringing in that same bronze uh, 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 folk art paint there and we're going to apply that to the armor texture and i apply it to those two little uh, sculpted bands at the back of the wrist there but those kind of get blended in uh, to the existing ripple and fold of the uh, the mole uh, uh, skin on the front of the body uh, you'll see here in a few moments i know it's kind of hard to explain there uh, but they do kind of blend in quite well and they kind of disappear into that fold of skin but it's still good to paint them regardless even uh, if they're not super visible
All right, so next part here, we're gonna to begin to work on the claws. Now, I'm gonna paint this in almost the same manner that I made the Pumpkin King teeth in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a variety of colors, just kind of tone them uh, so they look like they're supposed to be. In general, what we're gonna do here is we're going to apply more of a darker brown to the tips and the base, and we're gonna apply more of a raw sienna type of color uh, in a washed form to the middle of the claws. And that white uh, clay will pop through that, uh, that thin layer of raw sienna and we'll build up those layers as we see fit. You can see there the tips are a little bit darker, uh, but we're gonna build up that layer and it gives them a really nice paled out, uh, like kind of like a claw or a, um, a tooth texture look to them. And we'll continuously build up the layers in a washed fashion until we get the general look that we want. Uh, I want them to look very rich, but also kind of paled out. Uh, but I don't want them to look like they set themselves apart from the actual claws. I want them to look like they're made together and they're one uh, 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 organism or, or one creature. Uh, so we're going to kind of meet in the middle. Uh, I think if I recall correctly, I applied a little bit more raw sienna texture to the, uh, uh, the upper curve of the claw. And I tried to keep the uh, underneath a little bit wider. Uh, but either way, it doesn't matter really how you paint these as long as you just have fun doing so. Uh, of course, I have them stuck onto little armature wires and then we have them uh, just kind of stuck into a foam block here. Uh, and uh, of course, if you want to go back and watch the sculpting video of this, you can find this under the Diglett, Diglett playlist on my YouTube channel. I will also link that uh, playlist at the very end of this video. So sit back and enjoy as we finish up the claws here and then we will begin assembly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and give this a little while to dry here. I think I gave it around 24 hours in total just because I didn't want to, I didn't pick up the project again. Uh, but there they are completely cured. And here we are, we're gonna go ahead and kind of dry fit them at first. Uh, and I did a TikTok little, little highlight clip of that. Um, just kind of playing around uh, sinking them into the sockets that they were designed for uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use just a little dab of E6000 clear to go ahead and apply those claws to the paws of the mole here. Uh, I kind of do some fitting here and there just because I couldn't remember which ones went to exactly which uh, socket uh, but as long as they kind of uh, uh, fit well and they look good I'm cool with it. Now you also notice that I'm not afraid to have a little bit of that glue kind of squeeze out of the socket there. The way that I like to think about that is it's adding a small layer of cubicle uh, or build up around the socket where the claw is coming out. And I can give that a light layer of wash and it kind of blends that, that clear of, uh, glue in with the existing claw. It looks really good. Uh, and it just almost looks like I sculpted them together as one piece when it's all painted up and, and set up. And here we are, they are completely set up there and I think they look really good overall. I really do enjoy the overall process it takes to make these and put them together. And I, I look forward to making these for more projects in the future as they come up. All right, so here we're just kind of applying just a little bit of a smoothing texture to that glue there where it was a little bit too too much there uh, and then here we are they look absolutely phenomenal and here we are going to take a little bit of that wash there and we're just going to apply uh, to the base of the claws and we're going to let that wash down ink do the job for us uh, it looks really good uh, you can see the undertone of the claws are a little bit whiter tone and then uh, or a whiter color there uh, and then tops are a lot more in a, a raw sienna richness all right, so here are the claws in total, completely finished and ready to go and they'll be assembled into the actual main tumbler or the main diglet sculpture, whichever you'd like to refer to it as. 
uh, and then after we uh, fully assemble the main tumbler itself we'll be able to do some more detail work with the paints before we go into epoxy All right, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and begin the process of applying a little bit of dirt texture to it. I remember I said that I was gonna put dirt texture on this uh, diglet. Yes, we're going to. We've used dirt almost in all of them, uh, and I'm excited to be able to use them again in this one. So now this is real dried baked dirt that I have uh, collected around my property here. I made a little small video of collecting dirt for another project, the Goliath Bird Eater Spider Tarantula uh, Diorama that I made. A full on series, if you wanna check that out, it's another amazing diorama series. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use that same dirt and we're gonna go ahead and just kind of like claw our little claws and paws through the, through the glue there. And we're gonna then dip it into this dirt here. And that will give us a realistic kind of look to it where it cakes, it cakes, where it doesn't, it doesn't. And we're just gonna let the dirt talk to us and tell us what it needs. I'm trying to like simulate as if it were really a, a mole being cl like clawing its way through the dirt. And although I leave larger dirt granules on it than probably the mole would have naturally, uh, he would probably just have mole like dirt dust on him. It's still kind of fun just to incorporate that dirt into the project here. So sit back and enjoy as I kind of get messy with the dirt here before we uh, start off final assembly here. So as we go ahead and finish up the dirt there, now I do let that dry a little bit, but I go ahead and begin the process of kind of just uh, uh, gluing or e 6 thousanding adhering the paws into the, the places they're supposed to be. You can see that the uh, skin folds go over the edges of the claws there, so it looks like these little claws are poking out from the skin. Uh, not only does this save us a little bit of time as far as shading and painting, but it just looks really cool that it's incorporated in, although they were sculpted and painted separately, they're, they're all one piece when it all comes together. So we're gonna apply just a liberal amount of uh, E6000 to the base of the paws as well as inside that socket. And we're just gonna go ahead and push that into place and let it dry overnight. We're gonna let that completely fully cure up before we add any kind of washes or any more acrylics to those joints. And we wanna make sure that's very strong. Now I will say that later on in the process uh, of me taking time to finish this project uh, to completion because I let it set for months, I'll be honest, before I picked up this project again. One of the claws did break, so I will have to make repairs on that in the near future just by applying a little bit more dirt to that. But hey, maybe he was in a battle and he broke a claw fighting a Pikachu or, or something else. So it's very interesting to be able to see that. And you will see that in the epoxy process. You'll see it in its final form when I do the glamour shots at the very end of this video. We are getting very close. As you can see here, this is what it looks like before it is uh, UV resin with a nice layer of clear. Uh, and you can see how amazing it looks. The bronze looks really good as far as the face, the belly, the arms, uh, the, the armor of the arms, and the, eye, uh, the ear sockets there. It looks phenomenal. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And here you can see its final form completely clear coated with UV resin. This thing turned out absolutely incredible. And now the only thing it needs is a nice pile of dirt to relax in. And that will be the next portions of this video and the series is we're gonna roll into making different types of dirt bases out of clay, air dry clay, Sculpey Original, different types of resin, flocking and, and dirts. 
uh, and we're going to make all sorts of different bases for all three of these diglets. So I hope to catch you in that video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like, leave a comment, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next awesome video. Later, guys.